All right, we are recording. Welcome everybody. I'm so pumped for tonight's call. I was so bummed that last week I had to reschedule it because I did this call for another team and I was like literally sweating with, I should have worn a tank top, sweating so much because I was just like so filled with excitement and passion and I wanted to conquer all the things with you guys. So I'm, I'm really excited about tonight's call. I want to go over some housekeeping announcement stuff. Um, we got a lot to go over in that. So you ready? Um, the first thing I want to make sure that everybody saw, and if you have questions specifically about this, please put them in the comments so that we can talk about it in the chat, um, is we have a couples challenge um, that we are launching with 10 rounds. It, uh, in the picture from our group mentorship call on Saturday, we have um, the call link. So if you missed that call and you want to go back and listen to what the couples challenge is um, as we were creating it, make sure to go do that. But that couples challenge is going to be amazing. Don't miss out on the opportunity to talk about that. We also need to figure out if we're going to let people in the group um, just to participate with 10 rounds if they're not a part of a couple. Um, I, we'll have to figure that out as well. Um, so we have a couples challenge that's launching. 10 rounds coach stuff um, is, launches on the 16th. We've got our hands on the sneak peek link, the prep workout, sample workout, whatever you want to call it. So that is live. Um, so you can be sending that to people, talking about it on your social media. Um, but all of that is around the corner. So I, I, in this season of our team, there's going to be a lot of information thrown your way about um, this program that I'm going to be posting in the team page. So just digest it. If you have questions, feel free to ask it. There's no, my mom always said, the only stupid question is the one you didn't ask. Um, so we're always, uh, you know, there to help answer those questions. Um, so couples challenge called Battle of the Bods. Um, that's going to be starting in April. We have coach summit in a few months. I realize that that feels like we're really far away, but we're starting to talk about rooms, um, booking rooms for that, and also flights. So I've got a group chat up um, that I launched tonight for those of you who are going. If you're on the fence and want to talk to me about it, please private message me. It's an amazing, like if you think that team calls are fun because it gives you energy in your business or you like listening to national wake up calls um, and it gives you energy in your business, uh, Coach Summit is that times like a million percent and it gives you the most life and energy and joy in your business that I can't even describe. Um, so it's something I would highly recommend attending. Um, I have our March accountability pod. It's like a support group chat for those of you who are wanting extra support and accountability throughout the month of, month of March. I did just open that up this morning. Um, it is paired with our Emerald Push group, but if you are not in that group and you want to be in the pod, just comment um, in the team page and let me know. Um, our team dinner, if you're local, I want to see every person that is local better be at this. Um, we're having a team dinner and game night on April 4th at my house at 530. Please mark your calendars because I would love to see you. If you're from out of town and making the trip, I'm sure we can find lodging for you. Uh, we would love to see you to come to game night. Um, so that's April 4th. And then our lake retreat is May 1st. All of those are in the event page, in the team page. Um, so if you are local, those are two opportunities that you can, uh, we're going to offer team bonding, which is going to be absolutely amazing. So I think that's it. One quick shout out I did want to make um, is that, and I think she's already, oh, there she is, is on the call. Um, Holly, I got an email for about Holly, and she is our first ever Restoration Nation Success Club All-Star. So basically that means that she has hit Success Club for 12 consecutive months in her business um, from day one on, and that's a huge accomplishment, um, and the first one in our downline to do that besides me, which is exciting. Um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen. If you have any questions about anything, I just want to ever put it in the chat, um, and then we are going to hit the ground running with this. Can everybody see my, oh no, I don't need that one. Well, please, can you see 10 coaching fears? Is that up on the screen? Okay. All right, I need to minimize this because I can't see you guys. So this call was birthed out of um, a team call that I led from, for another coach. Now this team call, the mission of that, she had new coaches that were struggling and struggling with fear. And so she and I kind of put our heads together on what the 10 biggest fears are that 
coaches face in their business. And um, I also had asked you guys in the team chat. So all of these are from directly from her and from the coaches within our team and things that they struggle with. So my goal for tonight is I want, we're, with every fear that we're gonna be talking about, I want to identify the root cause of that fear because I think it's important to understand where that fear is coming from for most people. Now again, this is not cookie cutter, but this is pretty generally across the board. And then what a plan of attack to overcome that fear is. Um, so we're going to talk about that tonight. You don't need to know who I am because you already know who I am. Oh, please. I, I well, scrolled too far. Um, all right. So fear number one, we're just going to bullet point these and feel free to screenshot anything that you feel is helpful. But fear number one is of sharing your story and learning how to share, how to post on social media. When I was thinking about this one, the thing that kept coming back to me that people believe about themselves is that your message doesn't matter that you're not special enough or interesting enough, your life is too boring, that your message isn't important, um, that you're not, there's nothing that sets you apart from the person next to you, and that sharing your story, is, it does, just doesn't matter, that your message doesn't matter. Um, and so I'm gonna give you a practical game plan to overcome this. Um, I'm trying to hear, hold on, I dropped my lost machine. Um, and so here's what I want you to do. So we're going to turn your mess into your message. Um, I want you to, when you get off this call or tomorrow, look at old pictures of yourself. And when you're reviewing those pictures, what emotions do you feel? Because I can promise you, there are 15 other people on your social media that need to hear that message tonight. And if you can look at those old pictures and tap into what you used to feel, in those old pictures, but it doesn't have to be weight related. It can be emotionally, um, mentally, what were you facing that you have overcome relationally? How are your relationships in your life? Um, and you're going to begin to craft your story. Now you actually have an activity to do after we get off this call. And some of you are on this power hour where they did this, but you're going to take a piece of paper. I don't know if y'all can see my screen. You're going to take a piece of paper and you're going to fold it in half and then you're going to fold it in quarters. And then you're gonna crease the lines and then open it up and you're gonna have four squares on a piece of paper. I'm gonna give you the titles and it, on each column, each square, this is what you're gonna write down. So um, we're gonna do this in order to help you tap into what your story is. So now, column number one is how did you feel before challenge groups slash your fitness journey? How did you feel? Things that are on mine, they give you some kind of ideas. I cried in dressing rooms. Food consumed my thoughts. I was a prisoner to my cravings. I was angry when I interacted with, with other people. I didn't want to get out of bed. My marriage was struggling. I was ashamed and defeated with no identity. I was easily winded. winded. I wanted to sleep all the time. I was frozen with no direction in my life, and I hated my chubby cheeks. Um, and so that's my before challenge group column. So then on the next column over on the right, you're going to write, how do you feel after, how do you feel after your fitness journey? Or how do you feel now at this stage in your fitness journey? So things that I put where I'm emotionally in control, I'm more self-aware, humble, humble confidence instead of a facade, more caring towards my husband, more patient with my kids. I enjoy shopping. I'm not afraid to dream. I choose gratitude first. And so these are, notice that these are not all related to your weight or to your physical transformation that a lot of what people are going to want to hear from you has to do with your emotional change and your mindset change and the way that you've created a discipline that you didn't have before. So that's column two. Column three is how did you feel before you found your team and coaching? So things that I put were guilt every time I went to purchase anything from the store, anxiety, no true deep friendships. I was insecure in my marriage, afraid we would lose our house. Um, I was lacking purpose. I didn't have dreams or ambitions. Um, I felt like I was working to build someone else's dream. So that's what I felt like before coaching. So then on the right hand column, how do you feel after coaching? Um, things that I wrote were, um, I felt like I could use our money without as much guilt. Um, I felt like I was giving something to the world that I had purpose. Um, I had a crew, I have a crew of best friends now. I'm showing my kids what it's like to have two parents that live out jobs that they love. Um, and the reason that we're doing this, and as if you are a newer coach, 
it may feel a little bit harder to do this because you've not been around long enough to feel like you have this huge change. But the truth is that there are people that need to know what you're going through right now and they need to follow your story through to the triumph but they also will come alongside of you because they're like, wow, she's vulnerable and authentic and her mess, she's turning into her message. They can see that process and that inspires them more than just spewing facts about what products you're using. So your first fear is sharing your story and posting on social media. You guys, you cannot build a store. You cannot build a business without the storefront of your bit of your social media. This is gonna be a crutch in your business that's gonna hold you back from accomplishing the things that you want if you're not creating a daily routine behind sharing your story and sharing consistently. And it is important to remember that what you have to say does matter because someone out there can relate to that no matter how big or how small. A couple of personal development recommendations on this um, is Dare to Lead by Brene Brown. I feel like that's a really beautiful book about learning to share your story and having authentic authenticity in leadership. Um, and it's a great tool. So if you've not read that, that would be a good option for you. So that's fear number one and your practical action steps to overcoming that. Fear number two is judgment that you're not at your fitness goals yet. Um, her underlying belief here is that you have to be perfect to be a coach. This holds so many people back because they're like, oh, well, I haven't been perfect in my nutrition this week, so I'm not gonna post because I kind of feel embarrassed because I'm a coach and I should be doing better. You guys have watched me endure a 20 pound weight gain and, and never stop posting once on social media. I never stopped sharing the struggle. I never stopped sharing how I was constantly and am constantly working to overcome and figure out what's going on with my body. And yeah, I face this one a lot right now because I'm, I'm like, I feel like a fraud almost. But the truth is, is that I don't have to be perfect to be a health and wellness coach. People aren't coming to me because they want a six pack abs. People are coming to me because they want a lifestyle that they can live with forever. They're coming to me because they see that I have taken something that was so broken and turned it into um, something that has become beautiful for my life, even through the hard. Um, so your strategy to overcome here is to build your credibility through authenticity. So your message is creating belief in your audience that they can do it too. So if you can do it, Rachel can do it, then Jen can do it. And they're watching you and by you showing up through that heart and through that imperfection, they are inspired that, wow, if Rachel can have a rough weekend and hop back on on Monday morning, I can do that too. So some of you may know who the coach Emily Fauber is. Um, she's a very successful, like she was, in, I don't know, she's like maybe number two. She's in the top 10 this year and last year. Um, she went from one star diamond to 15 star diamond in three months the fastest in Beachbody history. Um, and she did it with the 80 day obsession launch. Um, but she did not wait until the end of her 80 days to share her transformation every week, every Sunday night, she would share day one to day seven, day one to day 14, day one to day 21. And she built that credibility with her audience through that process. So I'm going to challenge you. If you have never gone all in, I'm talking 150% to every workout, every nutrition piece of the puzzle. Um, I know that Lindsay can attest to this and I can attest to this being in a test group. It levels up your business. Like you would not believe when you can go all in with a program, and not waver at all, you are really showing the power of that transformation and building that belief with the people that follow you. Um, so when that fear is filling your head, I want you to remember that the girl struggling on the other side of that phone screen needs you to be her light in the darkness. And it does not matter if you're at your fitness goals or not, because she will be inspired by your story. She will be inspired by you overcoming, and that will encourage her to take action in her own life. So that's fear number two. Also, reminder, you're not always going to get it right. Example in case, right here on the right side of this screen, you're not gonna get it right, but the right people are not gonna care. You know, when I posted that that uh, awful picture of me and my Shakeology Munch in my pajamas, by the way, what the heck was I thinking? Um, I hit Success Club that month. It didn't matter that I was not posting correctly. 
the right people didn't care. And so you've got to get past that hump of not feeling like what you have to say is worth something or that you're not perfect so you can't share and, and just throw stuff at the wall and figure out what does work for you because the right people watching your page aren't going to care. Fear number three, inviting. I could probably ask this, but I'm not going to. Every single person on this call is probably afraid of this one. Um, and this is a, the underlying belief here is that what you're offering isn't valuable enough to share. Now, you could take this as you as a coach or you as the Beachbody on Demand and products that we're representing. Um, and with this one, I'm going to challenge you that that there will be phases of your business where you're going to have to do things that don't feel good necessarily inviting if especially as you're getting your groove you may have to do invites that are more quote unquote cold than you prefer while you're also simultaneously at the same time um building relationships with people and you're you're love bombing people's page and you're creating this pool of people that you can invite at a later date but you still got to do your invites right now because that's what's going to move your business forward because if you truly believe that what you're all, if you have this fire in your belly, that Beachbody has changed your life and you have been forever impacted and you have developed habits that you didn't have before that you feel like you could maintain forever, what you're offering is valuable. You're not hurting anybody by inviting them to the opportunity that you are offering. You're not, we're not doing anything wrong by sending an invite. And if someone comes at you negatively, most often it's because they've had a bad experience with someone else in the past. That's not you, that's them. So we gotta remember that. And also, they may not be the right people for you, and that's okay. So your strategy to overcome here is I want you to eat your frog. This is actually a book, um, so if you need a personal development recommendation, it's a great book for you. The premise of the book is you do the thing that you don't wanna do first. So for me, I hate, I hate sending invites. It's four years, four and a half years in, and I still don't like it. But it's something that I need to do first every day in my business because I know that that's the needle that pushes my business forward. So you're going to do that first at the very beginning of your day. You wake up, you drink your Energize, you do your personal development, you send five invites, and you go do your workout. Like That should be your habit. Because then you have done what you need to do that day to take your business into the right direction. Um, if you are sharing here, it goes back to sharing on social media. If you're sharing authentically and consistently, those two have to go together. If you are not sharing consistently, you lose all credibility with your audience. Sharing authentically and consistent, consistently, leading with your story, there is nothing to fear in inviting. Also, as a side note, if you've done your research about Shakeology, about the performance line, why is Energize better than C4 that they can buy at GNC? Why is Shakeology better than, um, oh, what's that one that everybody drinks that's in the pre-can? Anyways, better than that other shake that's on the market. Like, do you know why you believe in what has helped you so much? When you have that education behind your what you're sharing, you're going to have the confidence in inviting because no matter what they say, it's going to be like, yeah, I know that Shakeology is the big, best and baddest out there on the market. And this is why. So when you're researching and you're doing that, you have that confidence to combat the objections that you're going to receive. Um, Shay Stanford is a YouTube, um, she's a coach, but she's on YouTube. I think that's her name. Shay Stanford. And she has some really great Shakeology training videos. So if you struggle with that one and, and understanding how awesome it is, I would look her up because she has some really good stuff there. Fear number four, people judging you. So this goes back to believing that what you're doing is wrong. Um, when you fear that someone is judging you, what you're really doing here is you're judging yourself and the other person. So in this situation, you're assuming that you have done something that's going to cause a negative judgment. This is a reflection of your own fears, and you assume that the other person also feels that way, and that the action that you're doing, aka invites, will also be a reflection of their judgment on you. So with that's like a mouthful, I know, but basically you don't know what the other, other person is going to say. 
you have no idea. When they receive that message, they may be really struggling and they have watched you and you have been a light in a really hard stretch. And when you are bold and you are inviting them and saying, I believe in this so much that I want you to be a part of it, you are extending a an opportunity of hope for someone who might really need it. And I want you to keep that in mind that you don't know how they're going to receive it. You assume that they're going to be like, girl, why are you cold messaging me? You, you should, you should build a relationship first. No, no, no. We've all received the hate messages, but that person on the other side that needs you the most, who are, who's going to say yes to you at some point, they aren't judging you for sending that message that you are a light to them in, in their inbox. So, what I want you to do, there is a, we're going to create a judgy Judy list, okay? And you're going to filter every message you send through your judgy Judy list. I want you to, you don't have to do this right this second because you probably don't have a post-it note, but I want you to get out a post-it note and I want you to write down the names. And I'm talking like the tiny ones, not the big post-it notes, the small little like teeny note ones. On that post-it note, I want you to write down the, the people in your life whose opinions actually matter. Who in your life actually matters? Their opinion. Proper me, not, not that y'all don't matter, but it includes my husband and my mom and, and pretty much anybody outside that list. If, if you guys didn't like me, you're lucky you mean it. Your opinion is not what carries weight in my heart. <laughs> and so your judgy Judy list, if you're sending an invite, are they on that list? Is, is Joe Schmo from high school who you haven't, haven't really connected with in a couple of years, is she on that judgy Judy list? And if she's not, then her opinion of what you're doing does not truly hold a lot of weight in your life. So I want you to filter the, that thought process of what you're doing is wrong through this judgy Judy list. Like, is, is the person on that list who you're sitting in the back, are they on that list? Are they on that judgy Judy list? And the answer is no then, then we gonna send that invite. We're gonna, we're gonna eat that frog, rip the bandaid off and keep on trucking. Okay. Um, it, okay. I actually wrote in here is to get over your, you know, what self, but, um, what you're doing isn't wrong. Get over your damn self book. That should be a book that you should read if you're struggling with this. Um, that's a personal development book that is really good for this. I actually think Stephanie Rollins just started that book. Um, but that's a good one. If you struggle with the judgment of others, then that one needs to be on your must read because um, we all need to get over our dang self. Fear number five is sounding salesy. I hear this all the time and I have felt this myself. So I really can speak to this. Um, and I want you to take confidence. What you're offering here in Beachbody On Demand and you as a coach is not expensive. And when you are afraid of sounding salesy, a lot of it is based off that root belief that maybe you think that is expensive. Now, there is something to be said about having someone who truly can't afford it. That's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying that from what they're getting, is it expensive? Compare it to Orange Theory. If you've never done your research, compare it to Orange Theory. Call up your local YMCA and find out how much it costs to have a gym membership. How much does it cost to have somebody to create a meal plan? Like if you think about what you're offering, it is not expensive. So doing your research is really going to build that confidence in what you're offering. But the key here is that you are offering relationship. I think this is where people get so wrong in this business. We have a, um, here locally, there's, a, there's another multi-level marketing company that has popped up in recent months. And they are in an early phase of the first year of being in business. And all their representatives do is blast about products and blast about events and all these things. And they are not centered on relationship. And what we are doing here is you have these tools that you're offering them, but what you are selling is you. You are selling that relationship of a coach. You're giving them community. You're giving them accountability. That is the missing piece. They can go sign up for Beachbody On Demand on the website. They don't need you. But what they do need is a coach. And that is what you're selling. I know that seems a little bit weird, but when you realize your worth of having a cheerleader, like how I think back to my early days um, when my mom bought my package because I couldn't afford it. And Jennifer plugged me into a challenge group. And that was a lifeline for me. There was no price that you could put on Every other time I had tried to do this, I had stopped because I didn't have that accountability and support. And that's what you're giving to people when you are quote unquote sailing. 
being a salesperson is not a bad thing. You know, there's so like, we talk about the things that we love on social media all the time. That's I talk about, um, how much I love my hair, hair products and I don't sell Monet. I talk about how much I love my shirt that I got from the boutique down the road. And I don't, I'm not a representative of the boutique, but you know what I do, I'm sharing what I believe in. And when you're doing that, you're automatically discounting any kind of salesy approach because you're coming from a place of truly believing in what you're offering. Um, I also would encourage you to be willing to make mistakes in this area as you learn. I'm going to give you an example. Example A of all the things you should not do as a coach. But guess what? I built a really good business by making mistakes. I didn't do everything right. I didn't always post correctly. I did a whole lot of selling in the first few years of my business. And you know what? I still built a really wonderful thing here. And I, like I'm literally hashtagging Shakeology and Beachbody. Like what is wrong with me? But you have to be willing to make mistakes. You're not going to know how to not be salesy until you maybe make a mistake and do a salesy post and realize, oh, that's not, that doesn't feel good. I'm not going to do that again. So embrace the learning process that is social media because that's how you get past the hard part of your business of learning what works for you and what doesn't. Fear number six is rejection. So he, when I was thinking about this, I, I struggle with this too, still. <laughs> um, and it's because I am a type two on the Enneagram. I really love to help people. Helping people makes my heart happy. <laughs> it makes me feel like I'm worth something when I'm helping somebody. So I realized this about myself a few weeks ago when I'm doing mentorship calls with you guys, a lot of times you'll hear me say, is that helpful for you? That's the type two Enneagram in me because I want people, I want to be a, of help to others. Um, but my, I feel this rejection a lot because when my value become my value and my worth is rooted in what other people think of me, I'm setting myself up for failure here. So that's your underlying belief of rejection is that your value and your worth is rooted in what other people think of you. So there are two steps here that I want to challenge you when you're thinking about this area to overcome it. Um, I want you to get clear on what you want in your business. I want you to ask questions like, so this is where identifying what you want. What do you want out of coaching? Why do I want this? Why is it important to me? How is it going to benefit me or my family? What will I miss out on if I don't act right now and overcome this fear? So you're identifying what you really want in your business. Step two, I want you to identify the fear and ask questions like this. What type of rejection am I facing? Whose rejection do I fear? And why do I care about their opinion? How do I behave? When I, when I fear rejection? How is this helpful or hurtful to me? And how could I approach this situation differently? When you're looking at rejection through that lens of self-reflection, you're staying rooted in what you're working towards, but you're also gaining that perspective and clearness, clarity of, of why do you care what somebody says if you send them a message? Like, does that person on the other side of that phone screen really hold that much opinion and weight in your life? And if so, then maybe doing some personal development around that specific area would be helpful. Trent Shelton's one of my favorites. He talks about fear and becoming your best self a lot. He's got a really great new book out that I've heard is wonderful. Katie could attest to that. Um, but fear number six is that rejection. And so really looking at what you want in your business gaining that perspective of does this matter? Like, why am I viewing this from the lens of, um, is it helpful or hurtful to me if I internalize this rejection will help you in moving forward. Fear number seven, I'm going through these fast because there's 10 of them and I still want to respect your time tonight. <laughs> so if there's one that you need more on, let me know, put it in the comments. Can y'all still hear me and see me? Okay, good. I just got an alert that my internet connection is not stable. So if this if I peace out, I'll hop back on my phone. Just, I'm going to tell you that just y'all don't go anywhere. Um, fear number seven is not being as a good a coach as she is. So this is comparison in the strongest sense of the word. And I, I love this topic because, um, I, this is probably one of my superpowers is I have put 
tunnel vision on my business. I've never looked from the left to the right, even though there have been times where I've been tempted to because there's a lot of people who have started after me and gone a whole heck of a lot farther. I have had to stay in my lane, but every person on this team faces this. I was talking to somebody tonight and I was sharing the misconception is that everybody does well right out of the gate as a coach or everybody does well all the time and you're the only person on the team that doesn't do well. And here's the thing, you don't see the whole puzzle here. When I look back at my, I can go into my back office, I sold one challenge pack in six months when I first lost my, launched my business. Six months, I sold one challenge pack. I sold two base kits, so a 21 day fix or size base kit. And then in January, all of that six months of failing and making mistakes, I started to pick up momentum. So if I had looked to the left and the right to see what other coaches were doing, I would have gotten so consumed in how I was not doing well to, to and I would have stopped. I would have quit, honestly. So in this, your underlying belief is that you are less than someone else. So how, how you overcome this, we have got to create an environment of growth, of staying in your lane. I want you tonight, not tomorrow. I want you tonight to go unfollow every other coach that you follow. Maybe you have like a couple people on the team that you're besties with and that's fine. But I want you to go unfollow everybody. You can always go search their name and pop up. And I love Bonnie Engel. Anytime I want to go see what Bonnie Engel is doing in her business, I can go to the search bar on Instagram, search her page, and go look at it. You know what you don't need up in your Instagram stories is 15 to 20 other coaches telling you you're internalizing that you are doing something wrong because they're doing all these things and you're not, and you're comparing yourself instantly within 10 seconds of opening your social media. You are choosing that, guys. So you have to choose to unfollow anything that is keeping you in the comparison game. That doesn't mean you don't love Lindsay from the team or Jen from the team or Rachel. I don't care if you unfollow me. Love you, mean it. I know you know where to find me. And I want, Jennifer has unfollowed me. I don't know if you're following me again. She has unfollowed me in seasons where she needed to put her tunnel vision on and get herself in a healthy headspace. That is a good thing. We should be doing that. So if you are struggling with comparison, if I go onto your Instagram right now and you're following 50 coaches, we're going to have a come to Jesus meeting. It is not helping your business and propelling your business forward by looking at what everybody else is doing. In that same time, you can go watch 15 Instagram stories of what all the other coaches are doing. You could send out five invites, guys. Like, we are here to build a business. We're here to change lives. And you're not going to do that if you're stuck in the comparison game, okay? I'm getting heated tonight because this is a problem. And I want you to create an environment where you can succeed here. And that is a huge piece of that. You also need to celebrate every single win that you have. I'm gonna um, call Jen out on this. So Jen has done something really great. <laughs> and can y'all hear me? Is my internet frozen? No, it's good. Oh, thank goodness. We are getting new internet tomorrow, thank God. Um, so we, one thing that she has done is she screenshots. Any, if she gets a positive message from somebody, whether it's a client or she gets a comment on a post or she invites somebody and they're like, no thanks, but I love that you're doing this. You inspire me, blah, 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 blah. She screenshots it and she puts it in an album or prints it out. And she celebrates every win along the way. If you helped one person last month, we are celebrating that. If you lost five pounds last month, we are celebrating that. It doesn't matter that coach over here has lost 25 pounds, you lost five pounds last month, and we're celebrating that. And so when you are uh, accepting the feeling of success, no matter how small, we have to celebrate everyone along the way, you're going to create an environment here where you can thrive, because instead of misery and soaking in like, she's better than me, or she's, she, you know, she's obviously doing something right and I'm not, you are embracing where you're at in your business, you are putting your tunnel vision on and you're creating a, a place for you to grow in a way that's healthy and beautiful. So PD recommendation for this, Mastering Your Mean Girl by Melissa Ambrosini. That's a great book. If you struggle with comparison, I got a couple of you who I recommend and they're shaking their head. They're like, yeah, girl, that's a good one. So that's a good book. If you struggle with comparison, um, put that on your list. 
All right, off my soapbox. Number eight, not having balance in your life. So I hear this, I feel this, honestly, every day of my dang life. Um, where you feel like you're, there's, your life is not in balance because you always feel like you've got too many balls up in the air and you're, something is always being dropped and something is always being missed and you're failing in some area. The underlying belief here is that you're internalizing that you're too busy to coach and that your business is not going to be successful. So you shouldn't invest the time into it. Um, I am going to break this myth for you. <laughs> balance is a um, destination that you are seeking after that is not a destination. There is no balance. There will never be a season of life. And if you find it, then please, I'm going to have you host a team call and teach us all how to have balance. But odds are high that you will probably never have quote unquote balance in the way that you feel it should be because we only get a certain amount of hours in the day. Your truth is if you're working a nine to five job and you come home and you feel like you're not enough to your family, you're spending eight hours away from your family. Like there's no balance there. You can't spend five hours with your family and five hours of work and still bring home a paycheck. You know, like there is no balance. So when you, you have to understand that if you're working towards this goal for your family, most of you are doing this for your family, for your future, for the dreams that you have on your heart. Um, and it's, it will be a short term season of hustle for the life that you want, for the financial freedom that you want to be, to live debt free, to be able to pay for X, Y, Z in your life. And that balance is just, it, it's not going to exist. There is no work life. It's just all part of your life. And so when you start utilizing time management skills to be able to navigate a busy schedule, that's going to empower you instead of discourage you um, when you're facing a season of busy. Um, and there are going to be seasons where you will focus hard and you're going to be grinding and grinding and grinding. And then there will be seasons where you will not be. Um, and, and, that will be the ebb and flow in your business. But taking that time for that short season of hustle to have the payoff to feel that success of the consistency is so worth it. So letting go of that, um, that belief that balance is attainable. Number nine is never finding your tribe. So a lot of people fear that they are never going to find people to do this with them and that there's never going to be another leader that's going to join your team that is going to want to build the way that you want to build and that you're going to be stuck in this success club emerald success club diamond rut for the rest of your business the truth is here and guys this was a painful lesson for me to learn <laughs> the truth here is that you believe that you are not a good enough leader and um i have had a lot of experience in this area the first two years in my business um I'm going to be totally real with you guys. The first three years of my business, I had people in and out. But I, Laurel, I'm, I think she's on the call. Laurel is the only person that has stayed with me the duration of that time. Thank you, Laurel. I love you, mean it. Um, but I had a lot of lessons about leadership to learn. And it had to do with I believe that I wasn't a good leader. I believe that I wasn't capable of helping other people be successful. And that is not, a, that's not okay. That's a confidence issue. That's a belief of, of what I am designed to do that is so not true. Leadership is a skill you learn. It's not something that necessarily has to be God given to you. It is a skill that you cultivate and learn through trial and error. So acting like a leader before you are one is my biggest advice here. You get on your social media and you pretend like you are the bee's knees with the most kick butt team, and you talk about the lessons of leadership that you learn, whether you have a team of 50 underneath you or not. We are not the biggest team in the network. You know what we do have? We have a whole lot of heart. We have a whole lot of love to give, and we have a lot of integrity to do it with. And so we are leaders. We are a team of leaders, and people are going to be attracted to that mindset, to that um, energy of being excited about what you're doing. And I, in that pursuit of trying to quote unquote find people, when I became the most vulnerable me in, uh, in 2019, that was 
the like really the six months leading up to 2019, I started going to counseling. I was really struggling following the birth of my second son and I was not in a good place. And I started dealing with my crap. Okay. And when I started dealing with my crap, I became a better person and y'all can do that through personal development. You don't have to go to counseling, although I think everybody should go to counseling. Um, I started becoming my most vulnerable and authentic self on social media. And that attracted all of you <laughs> that attracted the people that fill my heart up with joy, not the people that sign on and say they're going to do something. And then when it gets hard, they quit or the people that are going to do it, but they're going to complain the entire time that they're going to do it. When I really began to focus on my leadership health per se, that is when everything changed in my business. So acting like a leader, doing the personal development, doing the grind when other people aren't, aren't doing it with you and being a part of community, getting in the middle of the bed, like we talk about is how you're going to start to attract the people that want to do this with you. You also have to believe, honestly, a lot of this has to do with belief. Do you truly believe that people are going to want to do this with you? The answer is no, we have a problem. If you believe that there will be people that will come and be attracted to you and want to do this too, then that's where the magic comes because you built the foundation for the success in your business. All right, number 10, failure. I love this one. Underlying belief here. This is what you're, when you, if you struggle with the fear of failure, this is what you're saying. In my humble opinion, mistakes and failure are bad. If I make a mistake or fail, I'll be rejected. And what makes me good enough or important is having people think well of me. All right, we're gonna read that again. Mistakes and failures are bad. That's what we believe in when we're afraid of failure. If I make a mistake or I fail, I'll be rejected. And what makes me good enough or important is having people think well of me. Here's the thing, guys. If you're basing your self-worth on what other people think of you, you're setting yourself up for some serious struggle in your business because your worth is not found in the opinions of other people. Your worth is rooted in who you were created to be and the purpose that you were, you were created to live out in this world. So you have to be willing to take big risks in your business. The bigger the mistake, the greater the victory. And it's not going to be if you're going to make those mistakes. It's when embracing that arena of mistakes, not letting your self worth be defined by what people think of you will help you overcome the fear of failing. Um, I'm sure that this, this one we could probably do a whole call on, but I really want you guys to view mistakes as a beautiful opportunity for growth. We've, I've had, holy moly, the number of mistakes that I've had as a leader is insane. I still, I have, um, I have a couple of people that I, I actually apologize to somebody tonight because I feel like I had failed them in my leadership. And there's never going to be a season of my business where I'm not going to make a mistake. There's never going to be a season in your business where you're not going to make a mistake. And it's what you do in that moment where you know that you had a, had a mistake and you knew it. You posted something that was salesy. You invited somebody and you got some backlash. You um, had a family member interested and they called you a, a mean name. Like Whatever it is, your mistake that you're facing, that is not a bad thing. It is an opportunity, a fork in the road for you to decide this is going to define me and what other people think of me matters or my self-worth is not rooted in my mistakes and I'm going to use this to learn and grow. And that's the crossroads that you face every time in your business. Okay, so the last thing that I want to do is we're going to watch a little video. Um, and I want to encourage you guys that the fears that we don't face become our, that's not really an encouragement. That's like a threat almost, but the fears we don't face become our limits. And here's what, um, Trent Shelton has to say about that. All right. Hopefully this will play. After that, hold please. I've got a spacious screen in porch. It's a new year, but is it really going to be a new you? A better you? I mean, what's going to make this year any different? What's going to keep you committed? Everybody makes a decision, but what's hard is staying loyal to your vision. What's hard is waking up every single day to go get it. You got to understand, ain't nothing in this world different. 
So if you want to make a change, you got to get outside your comfort zone and stop living inside your limits. You got to get up and go fight for your dreams. Yeah, anything is possible. To the heart that believes. Do you hear me? To the heart that believes. You got to throw that focus in your soul. Because way too many people set goals. But they never put in the work to see their dreams unfold. That can't be you. It's time to break through. It's time for you to stay loyal to what you said you were going to do. Even when that mood is left, even when that struggle gets the best of you, it's not there to break you. It's just there to test you. It is just there to show you how bad you really want it. Because when you're for real about change, you don't need a new year. All you need is this moment. So own it. You got to break those old ways. Because when you're committed to your purpose and you're focused on your vision, you don't have to chase nothing. Money, people, you don't have to chase nothing. Because dedication pays. Commitment pays. Consistency pays. Hard work pays. But I'll tell you right now, those weak habits, they got to break. Your mindset has to be reshaped. You have to believe the odds are beatable, even when people say it's impossible. That's what I call faith. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's what it's going to take. 24-7, 365, you got to live it, breathe it, be it every single day. you got to conquer any challenge that gets in the way. And remember, it's more about what you do and less about what you say. So if your life didn't say one word, what would your life speak? Would it still say you about that life? Would it still say you about causing your struggle, trading with peace? Would it still say you about getting the most out of your life? Every moment matters, especially when you realize over 150,000 people die every night. That's 55 million people a year. Ain't none of this promise. Ain't none of this guarantee. So the question I leave you with is this. When you fight your last fight, when you breathe your last breath, if this was your last year, what's the legacy that you're going to leave? Get up and go live your dreams. Make the world respect your greatness. Make this year your year. Like I said in every single video, it all starts with you. It's rehab time. Let's get it. Oh, I love him. He gets me so fired up. Um, I have, I'm going to challenge you guys. You've got to be your own hype girl. Um, in this business, we are here for encouragement and accountability and support and all the things, but you have to stay loyal to that vision. This, the opportunity in front of you with this company is to leave a legacy of financial change for your family and physical change for those that you love. You're sitting on an opportunity that could change hundreds and hundreds of lives, not to mention your own and your family. So breaking those weak habits, that should be our mission in March is that we are going to break the weak habits in our business, in our life, in whatever we're facing that's holding us back with these 10 fears. We're going to break those habits that are fueling that and we're going to leave a legacy through this avenue. And if you believe that, if this gets you fired up, then you should take that energy and joy and excitement and fuel it into your business. And all of the, the crud and the mistakes and the fears and the things that you're facing, you got to let go of that and be willing to push through that hard. Like there's a learning curve. There's this season in your business where everything just feels like so freaking hard and you've got to push through that to where you can get to the other side if you don't know Trent Shelton's story um he went through like he was dedicated to his vision for his life of leaving a change for 10 years before people knew who he was that is commitment and dedication and that's the kind of loyalty to our business that we should have because we believe so deeply in what it can do for ourselves our family and anybody that we come into contact with so those are the 10 fears and the ways to combat them kayla says why are you yelling at me i'm not yelling at you i love you <laughs> anything that anybody wants to talk about or go over fears are here scared to talk about so i'm not really expecting anybody to unmute yourself Okay. I want you guys to know that I love you. And I know I, one last thing, I know that I'm facing a lot of, um, help. You guys have seen facing a lot of health stuff. 
I am not going anywhere. Like I want to, to, uh, to reaffirm with you guys that I will never not show up for you. I am never not available for help. I am always a, a lifeline in your business, whether you're my personally sponsored coach or not. I just want to affirm that that is, I'm not going anywhere. I would could never, I eat, sleep, breathe each body and I could never do anything differently. So I believe in this with a passion that burns inside my soul. And I want to pass that to you guys. So hopefully tonight I left you empowered, ready to go conquer the world. Um, we've got some good stuff coming down the pipeline as far as team calls. We'll do a power hour next week. And then the week after we're doing a training with corporate on the compensation plan. So how do we grow our income the fastest way possible? What is rank versus volume versus like, how do you actually make money? How do you actually have cycle bonuses? Like what are you sitting on in your business? We're going to talk about that in a couple of weeks, which I'm really excited about. I feel like we could all, it's not my strength. So we're going to bring in somebody who does know what he's talking about. So, Excited for the future. We're going to make March a good one. Thank you guys for showing up tonight and we'll see you next week. Bye.